Big thanks to Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles America. You can check out Bandai Collect and links to pick this one up in the description. Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hey there, collectors. It's going to be Steven here, and I'm bringing you another SH Figure Arts Spider Man review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Iron Spider from Spider Man No Way Home. We all know. Spider-Man with a few more technical goodies. Yay! This is going to be quite the fun release, I think, of the three recent SHF Spider-Man releases that I've taken a look at. This is probably my most favorite. However, there is quite a bit to talk about because there are a ton of accessories. The articulation is interesting, and oh boy, this looks really fun. So, without further ado, let's take a look to see whether or not he's going to be worth adding into your collection. It's a fun picture with Deadpool, isn't it? Yeah, they're best friends. Metallic. Very cool. It's actually executed rather well here. Gold is notoriously difficult, regardless of the manufacturer, to get right without any sort of paint slop. And I do have to say that Bandai did a really nice job here with no real issues in terms of masking or any paint bleed that really isn't found on this particular unit. For the rest of the paints, like the metallic red that is used and the very subtle metallic blue, it looks really nice as well. I'm not really seeing anything that sort of jumps out at me. One thing that I think maybe they went a little bit overboard on, which was a critique that I was able to see online from the first Iron Spider release, a few years back is uh, the blue for the eyes, but nevertheless, we're going to uh, we're, we're going to have a little chuckle a bit later. I think it looks rather nice. Your mileage may vary for whether or not you agree it is source material accurate, but I think it fits the design rather well. Overall, if you like the design of the Iron Spider, as we've seen him so far in the MCU, then congratulations. I think this is going to be a solid representation. Now, the Waldo. The spider legs. We're just going to call them spider legs moving forward. Accessory section. Stick around for a bit. For articulation, um, I don't have the previous Iron Spider release. So um, if we're retreading ground for some folks, sorry about that. But what I can say is it's pretty similar to the black and gold suit Spider-Man from No Way Home. Uh, but there are going to be just a few changes and some differences. And also, we got to talk about the spider arms, the iron spider arms. So let's go ahead and just do a quick rundown uh, and point out some of the differences, just particularly talking about the No Way Home SHF. So head is going to plug in on a ball joint, and the head is actually rather easy to pop off. You can see how that works. So this block is on a ball joint that plugs into the neck on a ball joint, and then the neck is on a ball joint. So we have a good range of movement for Spider-Man. That is going to be relevant, uh, popping the head off, for how you uh, swap out the eye part. So something to keep in mind there, and then also mind how that pops back on, because you have to do it in a specific way. Shoulders, they're going to be on a uh, butterfly hinge, so this way they can move in and out, which is very good for Spider-Man's poses. And the shoulders are going to plug into that hinge on a ball joint, so we can spin the arms around like so. Now, the actual shoulders will house a hinge, however, because of the sculpt, now, he's not really going to be able, by default, to T-pose super duper well. Uh, for those of you who have the PS4 Spider-Man, you may recall that this was an issue with that particular figure. However, there you go. We can kind of do that. So we can kind of circumvent that issue with uh, just some creativity. But what's interesting is that the shoulder does also plug in on a swivel as well. So we can swivel the arm around up at that point. We do have, however, a dedicated bicep swivel, which is good, and double hinge elbows. Neat. The gauntlets are actually going to spin around. Cool. The wrists. I think actually recording the accessory section, um, maybe I mention this, maybe I don't. They plug in on pegs where they go into the forearm, so they are going to spin on swivels. Then they have hinges where they move one direction and then the other, so that's how you get different movement, like so. Then the hands plug in on ball joints. They're made of translucent plastic, which is typically known to be a bit weaker. Make sure you don't break them. Ab crunch moves just fine. I believe there's going to be a hinge in there along with a ball joint. Waist ball joint. We do have ball joints in the hips, which allow swiveling forward and back, no issues. And then hinge off to the side dedicated thigh swivel, double hinge knees, way to go. 
The ankles plug into the bottom of the leg on a swivel. We have a hinge forward and back with ankle rocker movement and a toe hinge. So we can get plenty of nice movement out of the main body for Spider-Man there. Very, very cool. For the arms here, this is pretty neat. So they plug in to the back panel of Spider-Man here, which I will show you in the accessory section how to swap out. They plug in on pegs, so they do swivel around like so, okay? Then we do have hinges. So think of these just like the wrists of Spider-Man here, okay? Then when they plug into this portion of the arm, they swivel as well. So you can see that they hinge in this direction. By default, we can't get them to hinge up and down, but we use the swivel to move them like that, and then we get the hinge. Then we have a hinge here, hinge here, and hinge here. No other movement throughout the legs of the Iron Spider. That is going to be consistent throughout all four. So it's going to be identical. So throughout the video, uh, different poses for the legs. I won't recap that here aside from just, uh, hey, take a look at those pictures. Overall, um, oh, yeah, sometimes uh, the connection feels loose, other times it feels rather stable, so your mileage may vary uh, for the connection. Overall, I do think that the articulation is rather solid, and how well do these legs hold up? Well, take a look at the pictures. The articulation is good, serviceable, and when it comes to the Tom Holland head sculpt, uh, the articulation is pretty much the same. All right, accessories, what do we have? Well, we're going to have a multitude of different hand parts. Oh boy, we get a lot. We are going to get the spider legs as an alternate attachment. We're going to get alternate eye parts and some webbing parts with an alternate neck part. We, we get a lot of stuff. Everything is going to be shown here for you. Okay, so the alternate hands, pretty cool here. What do we have? Well, we are obviously going to have the web slinging hands. We're going to have gripping hands for the web. So this way he can swing along. We're going to get some boogie hands, which is going to be pretty cool. We're going to get double gripping hands for the web. Everything you see here, very, very nice. Now, for the eye parts, for the most part, for the Iron Spider here, for Spider-Man, we're going to have a blue-eyed Iron Spider. But for one set of eyes, we're going to have a red-eyes Iron Spider. See what I did there? So for the blue eye set, basically going to change from rather wide eyes to small eyes. And then for the red, I'm going to set phasers to kill. All right. Pretty cool there. The way you swap these out is we do get a little tool. So this way we can just pop the eyes out after popping the head off. I've already demonstrated this plenty enough with, with Deadpool and other Spider-Man releases. So you can just check those out. Chances are, if you're picking this up, you already have one of them. Uh, you know how to do that already. Now, when it comes to the web parts, uh, actually, you probably are familiar with these because the majority of them are going to be reused. We have one long swinging web part. We have two long shooting web parts and two short shooting web parts. We're also going to get one sort of, I guess you may say, pulling web part. It has a little um, attachment part, I guess a gripping part at the end there. And this is going to be for the cupped up hand part. So this way it can look like Peter is, oh, I revealed his identity, uh, can pull on something. I actually think this would be really cool for an alternate part. So this way he can wrap it around his wrist to make it look like he's shooting it out. But nevertheless, that is what we're going to have right now. Let's go ahead and talk about the iron spider legs, the back panel for Spider-Man does pop off and you can just pop this part on and there you go. Rather easy. The most important part though, how loose are the legs? Not very. In just touching them and moving them around, uh, as we kind of demonstrated in the articulation section, they can feel easy to move. Not necessarily loose, but easy to move. However, they can support the figure's weight. I'm sure this was not really intended and it's probably not going to hold them up for long periods of time. However, it does work. Alternatively, there is going to be one little support peg that does go into his back that is not compatible with the plug for the Iron Spider legs. So, yeah, something to keep in mind. Last but not least, we are going to have an alternate neck part for Spider-Man. So if you did pick up the black and gold suit, you will have a default exposed Tom Holland head, Peter Parker head. And this is included, so this way you will be able to display the Iron Spider with 
an unmasked head sculpt. There you go. Action shots. Oh boy. Lots of fun, neat accessories here for this particular release. I do like all the good stuff we get here. And honestly, just reviewing everything. I really don't know what else can be said here. Now, for, um, because we're going to go ahead and wrap up this section, uh, for one critique, it this is kind of a constant. Uh, we do get adapter parts for a Tamashi stage support stands, but we don't actually get one included here. To be fair, we do have two previous Spider-Man figure arts that I reviewed, and there is going to be one first production run bonus for the black and gold suit. So if you are on your game and you already got everything, you're going to have a total of three support stands. So yeah, you could very well sacrifice one of those support stands for this release, but nevertheless, eh, maybe they could have thrown another neat display base in here. If you do need support stands or effect parts, you know, I got videos to help you out. Size comparison time, where I think we have a nice selection here. Honestly, he's not going to be much bigger or smaller than the previous Spider-Man figure arts, which we've taken a look at here on the channel. Buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Uh, Looks-wise, good. Accessories, fun. Articulation is a little bit limited, specifically when it comes to the shoulders. This is something that needed to be addressed back when the PS4 Spider-Man was released. But nevertheless, if you know how to move your joints around, especially with the spider legs, then guess what? This is a very fun figure that can be in a whole bunch of neat, goofy poses. And I like it. It's good. It's my favorite of the SHF Spider-Man that I've taken a look at so far. The only other one is going to be the Toei Spider-Man that's going to uh, surpass this one. So kudos to Bandai. I was really looking forward to getting this one in some way, shape or form. And I'm glad that I got to take a look at it. So if you're thinking about it, wait for a sale, full price, doesn't matter. You're going to be getting a good product, which that's what counts, right? Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.